It's time that we have a conversation together now about proportion. And every time you ask questions about proportion, you have to make a very clear distinction. Is it direct proportion or is it inverse proportion? So for every question, ask yourself, is this an example of direct proportion or inverse proportion? And I will discuss both types of proportion um, in the next uh, few videos. So check my website, explainingmaths.com, where you'll find all those videos nicely organized. Okay, we're going to start now with an example of direct proportion. For instance, the following question. I hope you can read it, by the way. A car drives 42 kilometers with 3 liters of petrol. How far will the, drive, uh, will the car drive excuse me, with 6 liters of petrol? And the second question, with 7 liters of petrol. So, if we highlight the important information, the car drives 42 kilometers with 3 liters. And with direct proportion, I hope you realize, is that if you give it more liters of petrol, the car will also drive further. Yeah, that's direct proportion. If one variable increases, the other one will increase. If one variable decreases, yeah, so let's say I have half of three liters of petrol, then also the distance will decrease, will become half of 42. Yeah, so that is direct proportion. Now, if I solve it, there are several ways of doing it, but uh, what I prefer is to say uh, distance and the other variable is the amount of liters of petrol. Yeah. And I connect the two values they give to me, which are 42 kilometers with three liters. So 42 kilometers and three liters. Okay. Now the question is, how far will it drive with six liters of petrol? So the petrol here goes to six and then I ask myself so how many times more is that well all of you will know oh, that's twice as much so direct proportion 42 also becomes twice as much so the answer will be 84 okay so with six liters of petrol you can drive 84 kilometers now that is a rel relatively easy question and yeah? most of you solve that without uh, creating a diagram but what about seven liters of petrol because it's not that straightforward now with they have to go to seven liters. I'll put the seven here, but I leave some space there on purpose, yeah? Because what do I do first? First, I'm gonna find out one liter. How far is that gonna give me? How far is that gonna bring me? And from three to go to one, I divide it by three. So direct proportion, I also have to divide the distance by three and 42 divided by three is 14 is that correct three times 40 30 42 yes 14 so one liter is going to bring me we're going to add the car will travel 14 kilometers okay direct proportion if one liter is 14 then seven liters so times it by seven 14 times 7 is 70 is 98 yeah so times it then by seven is 98 kilometers so when it's not that straightforward, always have a look at, okay, what is one unit, one liter, how far will that bring me? And then you multiply it by, in this case, seven. Okay, they could also ask me, uh, for instance, uh, 21, let me just add one more question. 21 kilometers, if I have to travel 21 kilometers, how many uh, liters of petrol do I need? Okay, so I can use the same diagram, 21 kilometers. Yeah, that is the distance. So I'm going to put the 21 here. If I have space, I, can, I will just attach a piece of paper. Yeah, I'm sure you can still uh, see all of that. Okay, so I'm going to put a 21 here. Now, perhaps you already see to go from 42 to 21, that is, I divided by two. So direct proportion, that one also needs to be divided by two. So that would be three divided by two, which is one and a half. Yeah? So the answer to that question, 21 kilometers, if that is the distance to go to my grandma or whoever, then I need to make sure I buy one and a half liter of petrol. That was that. Good. Inverse proportion in the next video. Explainingmaths.com for all the resources you need. The entire curriculum explained for you all for free. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.